So I know I'm doing something right because I got in the car with my daughter this morning and I had this Hank Mobley record that came on from my phone from the night before and it was the last track on the record and after a, a couple of bars she was like, can you switch it to Uh Huh, which is the second song on the record, which uh, I guess is her favorite one now. She, we've been listening to that. I've had that record on in the car instead of like, you know, 94.6 or whatever like, you know, the hot pop station is that her friends are listening to. So <clears throat> at least she knows about Hank Mobley. So she's at least marginally inoculated for when she gets older. But anyway, that record is great and it has a ton of uh, Grant Green's guitar playing on it because it's a quintet and there isn't a second horn. It's, it's Hank Mobley with um, Witten Kelly on piano and the rest of the Miles Davis rhythm section from the time. I guess it's Paul Chambers and Philly Joe Jones, but I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, uh, and then the fifth musician is Grant Green playing guitar. So I've been hearing a lot of Grant Green uh, and um, when I haven't had to switch over to Hot 94.6. And, uh, and there's this move that he does. It's one of those things that bebop guys do where they take a dominant chord and he's doing it in some jazzy key like F or B flat or something. But in E, if you had an E7, uh, it means taking the E7 and say in the first four bars of a blues, and you've got your E for a, for a bar, your A7 for a bar, and back to E7 for two bars, and then that takes you over to the A, the four chord in bar five. And the idea is that it's a substitution that says, uh, instead of just playing straight E7 over to A7, you can sneak in a B minor seven chord to the E7 to get you to A7. So you'd have a bar of E, a bar of A, and then E, and then B minor seven to E to A. You might even back it up further and have a bar of E, a bar of A, and then basically a bar of B minor seven to a bar of E7 over to A. And the idea is that what you're saying is, I'm landing on A. E7, besides being the one chord in the key of E, is also the five in the key of A. So if I'm going to an A chord, I'm thinking of this E temporarily as the five of A. And so if E is the five of A and I can do that, I can also say, well, what's the two chord in the key of A? Oh, it's B minor, how convenient. Let's do B minor, the two, to E7, the five, to A, and that is the dread two, five, one that jazz musicians are always talking about. So it's basically looking at the A as the destination and saying, how can we dress up the move to the A? The first move we can do is say, well, we can think of this as the five chord over to the A, and then we can think of this as a two to five to the A, and that lets us do a couple things. One is you can play a lick that spells out the two, resolves to the E, the five, so, and then resolves to the A, the, the one chord. So if you're playing blues, and it gets us over to the, the one the, the one chord, the, the A, the imaginary one chord, which is really four in the key of A, in the key of E. So what we're doing, and then this is, so the Grant Green connection is he does this move a lot in different contexts, in different parts of the chord progression, but we can use it here to get from the E to the A. What I'm playing is, and then I'm turning this note into a chord. So what's happening is I'm arpeggiating the A, the B minor. So here's B minor, here's the fifth, the flat third, and the root of B minor. So, and then stepping through a scale step to get to the root. So here's five, flat three, two, root, major seven, two, root, fifth, flat seven, and then half stepping into the major third of E, and then over to the sharp nine of E, to the flat nine of E, landing on the fifth, 
of E. So as a single note idea, the line is. And with the bass, just doing the steady bass to keep it going. Because you don't have to necessarily play the root of the B minor. You can just suspend or hang the sound of that B minor over the E bass as like sort of a suspension that resolves to the E, which resolves to the A. And when you get here, the other thing that thinking this way as in terms of like pretending that E is the five of A, what it does is it lets you treat the E chord for that last measure, measure four, before you're about to lay on the A, as an altered sound. Because when you're going from five to one, from one dominant chord to the next, you're allowed to make the dominant chord that's heading to the one that's acting as the five is allowed to be an altered sound to kind of amp up the tension and make it sound more dominant. I don't know why I'm all the finger quotes today, but more dominant to get over to the, the resolving seventh chord. So you could think of it like this. Here's your E7, A7, E7, E7 altered. And so alter just means you can take this basic seventh chord and you're gonna play, you can include the flat 13, which is also the sharp five. You can play the sharp nine, which is a half step up from the nine, or you can play the flat nine, which is a half step above the root. All those notes are fair game and you can use those as chord tones or you can use them as single note melodic things. So if we're just playing blues and we wanna drop this lick in, So obviously you wouldn't do it <clears throat> more than once. It's kind of a lick and sort of a moment, but you could practice it that way. You could try playing different things over the remaining eight bars of every chorus and then make sure you come back around every time and you can hit that lick until you know that you can play it. <clears throat> you can put it there anytime you want to. So that's the Grant Green appropriation of a bebop lick into the steady bass blues. So check that out. Hope it's fun to work on. Drop me a line down below if you've got any questions and I'll see you next.